Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm on the track bed of a disused railway line. And this is a disused railway line which has been brought back to life along this section here. This is probably the most attractive section of this particular disused railway line. But this video isn't about the disused railway line and it's not actually about this miniature railway line. Neither is the video about Rudyard Lake, which is where this miniature railway runs along beside. This is the Rudyard Lake Railway. We're on the track bed of the old leak to Macclesfield Railway, but this video isn't about any of that. I haven't come to do the history of them. We have done a video on Rudyard Lake in the past, and it is my plan to do a proper Henry's Adventures video where we will walk this track bed from Leek up to Macclesfield. We will do that in the future, but this video is really, it's following on from what happened the other day when we went to Mark Eaton Park in Derby. You may have seen that video. What happened was we were walking around the park and we were following the track bed of the 15 inch gauge Mark Eaton Park light railway. And it was really quite sad because this railway opened in 1989 and then it closed in 2016. So it had quite a short life. It's opened and closed within my lifetime. And when you think about the time most railways closed, such as this one, you know, you're talking sort of beaching or, you know, around the 50s and 60s kind of era. Very rare we're talking about, you know, 2016. So I thought it was really sad that the miniature railway had closed. And that led me to think of something. And I did sort of mention it in that. I said, wouldn't it be great to go and visit every miniature railway? Because you just don't know when they're going to close. Probably Mark Eaton Park Railway in 2014 you wouldn't have known it would close you know in a few years time so the point is you don't know when they're going to close so that's what I thought I'd set myself the challenge to visit and travel on every miniature railway so we'll go to each miniature railway we'll make like a little vlog when we get there so we will come here again this isn't the one for Rudyard Lake railway it will get a proper one it's a bit like you may have seen there was a couple called Jeff and Vicky who visited every railway station in Britain their channels called all the stations do have a look on there they've made some really good entertaining videos there's another couple called Paul and Rebecca that are visiting every disused station do check out their channel that is you know really good as well i believe there's a gentleman out there who might have been to every model village i think there's another one out there who's driven every type of car so i thought i'll be you know the guy that goes to every miniature railway it's not i'm not gonna not gonna try and be the first to go to every miniature railway because there possibly are other people who have already done that but i'll be the first one to make a vlog at each miniature railway so Really, the challenge shall start very soon. What um, I'll do is I'll get like a t-shirt made and um, we'll start visiting all the miniature railways in Britain. I've walked along the Rudyard Lake Railway track bed to Lakeside Loop. It's not actually a station, that's why it says do not alight here it's the midway point when on days when they're running two trains the two trains pass and it really has a lovely view over Rudyard Lake so what I thought we'll do now is um, as I've already made it quite clear I very much enjoy going to miniature railways so I thought I'd talk a bit about um, you know uh, my first memories of miniature railways and my first trip on a miniature railway so my first trip on the road, I don't actually remember it, but there are pictures, and that was to Cassiobury Park in Watford. We went to the Watford Miniature Railway, and I was pulled by a steam locomotive called Trevific, which, funny enough, was actually here fairly recently, but I was in Hungary at the time, so I didn't actually get to see it. So, Trevific was my first steam locomotive I ever had for haulage, which, um, you know, so I'd really love to see that locomotive again, and no doubt, in the course of this series, we, we will. I believe she's now down at the um, Royal Victoria Railway in Southampton. So that was my first steam locomotive of any size I had for haulage. Just in case you're wondering, my first standard gauge steam locomotive I had for haulage 
was met number one at the Buckinghamshire Railway Centre. And on that day, I did also go on a miniature railway, um, the Golding Spring miniature right at the Buckinghamshire Railway Centre. But that will be covered when we do the Golding Spring miniature railway. So one of my first real memories of going to a miniature railway, I must have been about three or four, and it was a family holiday. We were down in Devon, and we were staying on a caravan in a farm. And one day we went to the RHS Gardens at Rosemore. That's Royal Horticultural Society Gardens, Rosemore Gardens. We went there, and um, you know I really enjoyed it because you'll see from some of my other videos, I enjoy going to National Trust places and castles and abbeys and walks in the country. So you know I don't only like railway stuff. I'm you know, I, I, I like lots of things. So, I, I, you know, as a child, I really enjoyed, you know, seeing the gardens, all the little waterfalls and ponds and trees and that. And then what must have happened? I don't exactly remember this bit, but we must have got in the car afterwards. And I probably said, where are we going now? My parents said, well, we're going back to the caravan. But the bit I do remember is we were driving along and suddenly we went over a level crossing of a miniature railway. And I was like, Mum, Dad, we just went over a miniature railway level crossing. And they were like, oh, oh did we? Oh, how strange sort of thing. Um, the place we were arriving at was the Great Torrington Miniature Railway. So they obviously knew we were going there, but they kept it as a surprise, which, you know, I, I always did like surprises. So I was quite happy and I was delighted that we weren't just going back to the caravan, but we got to have a ride on the Great Torrington Miniature Railway. I'm really glad I did do that because, unfortunately, that railway has now closed. I think it was due to close when we went there then. It, it seemed to go on forever. It was a dumbbell shaped miniature railway. For those who don't know, that's basically a railway that goes like that with a loop at each end. Um, and I remember I really enjoyed it, but I think the man driving the train possibly told my parents that the railway was due to close. And I think that's, it did close. And then a few years later, on a family holiday, I believe it was about year 2000, we stayed in Westwood Ho. And one of the afternoons, I persuaded my parents to go to the Great Torrington. They said, dear, but Henry, you know the railway closed. I said, I know it closed, but I want to go there. I want to see if there's anything left of it. So we went there, and the track was all still in place. Now, that's pretty much all I remember, is just seeing a slightly overgrown track bed. Now, of course, I'll be taking pictures, and I'll be saying, hello, thank you for joining me. We're at the abandoned Great Torrington Miniature Railway. But unfortunately, um, I didn't think to do that in those days. So, and I now, I, I don't actually know what the state is of the Great Torrington Miniature Railway, if the track's there, or not. So if anyone watching this knows what's happened to Great Torrington Miniature Railway, um, if you'd comment and tell me, I'd be really grateful to hear from you. So that is my um, earliest memories of Miniature Railways. The Dam. That has got to be one of the most unusual names for a railway station. We've come along the Rudyard Lake Railway, through the cutting, to the dam. Now, I know I said this isn't so much about the railway, etc. It's about my challenge, but seeing as we're here, I might as well let you see why it's called the dam. It's for a very, very literal reason. If it's going to get a bit windy, so I'm going to have to shout. It's because it is the dam. This is Rudyard Lake, and that's the dam. So there you go. That is why this railway station is called the dam. Interestingly, there's probably not many railway stations that start with the. I can think of the Hawthorns in um, the West Midlands. If anyone can think of any others, then welcome to let me know in the comments. So, we have come to the dam. And the thing I've come, I'm going to talk to you about here is what actually is a miniature railway. Because that is, you know, one thing that has... Um, no doubt sparked many debates in pubs and many debates um, on the internet, on social media. So to me, or what I'm going to cover in this series is miniature railways. So this isn't model railways, so gauge one model railways, gauge three, they're all very nice. I'm not saying we won't make any videos at them, but they won't be covered under the Miniature Railway Britain series. Neither will narrow gauge railways. So railways like the Vestiniog won't be covered. The Vestiniog's not a miniature railway, it's a narrow gauge railway. Same as ones that were built more for pleasure, such as the Amerton Railway. Um, again, it's a lovely place, and no doubt we probably will go there, and I'll make a video there, but it won't come under the Miniature Railway Britain series. So on the whole, a miniature railway is a railway that was built more for pleasure 
rather than to carry people you know either to work or carry goods so pretty much all the minute the narrow gauge railways in Wales I nearly called the miniature railways which I've just said they're not all of those railways such as the Fustiniog were built for an industrial purpose mainly to carry slate in Wales and around other parts of the country for other reasons so miniature railways really were ones built for pleasure so some of the longer bigger miniature railways such as the Romney Harvard Dimchurch and the Ravenglass Nestdale they will be covered because in my books they're miniature railways and again that is an interesting thing the gauge the whole gauge thing when does miniature become narrow gauge so what I'm gonna say is on the whole anything above 15 inch are probably called out narrow gauge so a railway again like the steeple grange railway 18 inch gauge that won't be covered it's a lovely place I'll probably still go there and make a video but it won't come under miniature railway Britain but there, there this is where it gets a bit complicated because some railways of a wider track gauge than Steeple Grange may well be covered, or no, they will be covered, such as the North Bay Railway in Scarborough. That's 20 inches, but it's a miniature railway. So that will be covered. And the miniature railway at Blackpool Pleasure Beach, that is 21 inches. So again, we will cover that. So really, it's anything you can ride on. So from probably three and a half inches, maybe two and a half inches, if I can find a two and a half inch loco that will pull me along then we'll cover it up to um, anything that's a scaled down thing so as it, again narrow gauge railways are you know they're full size but the tracks narrow because like for the studio it simply would not be practical to build a standard gauge line where it runs so that is what a miniature railway is for the miniature railway Britain series So that's been a very enjoyable walk along beside the Rudyard Lake Railway. It's um, a railway obviously we will do again as part of the Miniature Railway Britain series. I'm just coming now to the main Rudyard station so I'm going to tell you the final few things I want to tell you in this lovely setting of Rudyard. So look at the little semaphore signals and the footbridge and everything. It's, um, it's a lovely place. Um, no trains running today because we've come here, you know, after the railway's closed. It would have been running earlier. So the things, last final things I want to mention is um, regarding visiting every miniature railway. Well, so far, I think I've been to about 50 odd miniature railways. Now, I'm going to go to all 50 of those miniature railways again and make a vlog at them because some of them have featured in Henry's Adventures whether it be just a clip of a train or whether I have actually you know been doing one of my vlogs and it's featured but each railway will feature in the miniature railway Britain series again there's you know there's miniature railways so I'll go to all the ones I haven't been to before and there's miniature railways like the Beaconscourt Light Railway which I've been to so many times I'm not quite sure why um, you know, so that that will all be featured. The final thing I wanted to say is, this is where you come in. If you've got any questions at all you want to ask me, then please comment or send me a message, ask your questions, and what I'll do, I'll do another video shortly where I'll aim to answer all your questions you have regarding my challenge. So the challenge is set. I'm going to visit every miniature railway. I'm going to use a mixture of public transport so this miniature railway you can actually get to by public transport because the leak to Macclesfield bus comes up to Rudyard or if you fancy quite a nice walk along the trap bed from leak which again I'm going to cover in a future series but not as part of the miniature railway Britain series you can actually walk here from leak some of the time we will be using my larder to take us to miniature railway so it's going to be a mixture of larders walking buses and trains maybe one or two trams or metro it's not there are some that possibly that will be our way and part of the whole series will feature me so if i'm going say to a miniature railway that's near a railway station then the video will start with me either on the train or getting off the train at the railway station so everything will be covered so I'll let you know whether they're railways that are easy to visit or railways like this where 
it's not so easy to get to by public transport but it really is still worth visiting so i hope you enjoyed the series like i said the important bit now is if you've got any questions comment on this video i won't reply by typing a response i will reply in the next video i will answer them all or if you want to send me a message then please do but please answer all your questions because i've thought of a few things like to answer like what is a miniature railway but there might be things you're thinking well how's he going to do that that i haven't thought of so you know please please comment and um i'll aim to answer all your questions so as i said challenge is accepted i'm going to visit every miniature railway in britain thank you very much for watching and goodbye